Now coming to this paired t-test. So paired t-test, as the term or the name suggests, that it will have a paired value. Now, while dealing with the independent sample uh, t-test, sorry, yes, independent sample t-test and one-way ANOVA, I told you that the, there should be independence of observation. But in this case, paired t-test, we don't want independence of observation. Why? Because there is only one group here. There is only one set of study subjects and we perform the study on that group only. There are no two groups, there are no three groups. So that's why we say that it's a paired value. Paired value means one individual, two value. It may be pre-post, it may be under two intervention, or it may be the difference. That we will see the various type of study design in which we should apply this paired t-test. So the, the first coming to the research question, if I want to know whether there is any change in the score of any paired observation, so the research question could be whether there was a mean difference in dieters daily calorie consumption before and after a six week hypnotherapy program. So you have done a single intervention on single set of individual and you want to know where you have measured the calorie before intervention and after intervention. And if you want to see whether there is a difference between these two, then we apply this pair T test. Second question could be, if I wish to test the effect of a Prozac, that is a drug, on well-being of depressed individual using a standardized well-being scale, that sums the Likert item to obtain a score that could range from 0 to 5. So here, the one variable there is, all, is the continuous variable and the independent variable is two different time point. There is a pre-intervention and there is a post-intervention. Similarly, the third type of research question, there is a group of people with a dry skin and I am testing two things a medicated lotion on one arm and a non-medicated lotion on the other arm. And after a week, I measure the deadness in terms of the maximum diameter on each arm. And I want to know whether the medicated lotion is better or the non-medicated lotion is better. So in these type of research question, in first two research question, what have you seen? There is some intervention and you want to test before intervention and after intervention, two different time points. Whereas in the third one, you will see that it is not the two different time points, but the two intervention. But the two interventions are on the same individual. In this case, you can see <clears throat> right arm and left arm. It is not that there are two groups you can perform the similar study on the two group of study subjects also. Like one, you can perform the, like usually we do, there is a control arm and there is an intervention arm. If I am doing a control and intervention arm, then the studies groups are different. The individuals are different. In that case, I will apply independent sample t-test. In this case, since it is a paired value means we are taking the value of the individual, of the same individual, the two values. So that's why we'll call it as a paired value. And in this case, what will I do? I'll do the paired T test. So in all these research question, what have we observed? We have seen that there is a scale variable in each research question, and I want to compare it before and after. Ma'am, I want to ask one thing over here. In the Likert scale example, we said Likert scale is, a, is, a, is an ordinal scale. Yes. So, like, uh, like there are some papers which I read, like they use uh, for Likert scale, ANOVA or Kruskal Wallace or Man Whitney U test. Yes. But how can we use PET T test? Yes. 
So Ashish, if you recall the first, I don't know whether you attended the. We have discussed this concept. There is a. Just a second, let me check. Internet to her. Okay, so can you hear now? Like, like, there is a like serious like. Okay, I'm waiting. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, Ashish, uh, uh, in the first day where we were discussing the variables, the different sort of variables like nominal, ordinal, and interval, and ratio, we discussed that ordinal has got this characteristics that if the categories are more than five, five or more than five, like Likert five point Likert scale seven, scale, seven point scale, pain score, scale VS, the score, we can convert that score into a continuous data. Means we can treat that score as a continuous data and we can apply all those tests which we want to perform. So is it clear to you since Likert scale, it is five or more than five? Yes. You can treat it either as ordinal or you can treat it either as a continuous. Both way it is right. So it it will depend on my research question. So that's why if you sum that score up, it will behave like a continuous data. But but you cannot do this with the three point scale. It should have at least five or more than five category. Right. Ashish, did you get the answer of your question? Maybe washrooms. So now, Ashish, did you get the answer of your question? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, and is it clear to other participants about this uh, conversion of ordinal scale into a continuous one? Okay. So, in all this, what have you observed? That there are two, there is one variable which is a continuous variable, and we are measuring it at two points of time and before and after. Similarly, in this case, you can see that the appropriate statistical test would be a paired T test. And how we uh, do this paired T test, this is also known as the single sample, it's a single parameter T test. So now what are the assumptions? So there are a few characteristics of this paired T test. The first one, the first type of study design is the participants are e either the same individual tested at two different time points or it's the two type of which are tested under two different conditions like we did that medicated versus non-medicated lotion in right arm versus left arm. So the research question is like if I want to measure the weight of people in a program to quit smoking for each person I have the weight at the start and weight at the end of the program. And if I want to know whether the mean weight changes for people or not. The second could be if an instructor gives students an exam and the next day gives students a different exam on the same material and the instructor wants to know if the two exams are equally difficult, then we calculate the difference in exam score for each student. But remember, in this case, we will give the two exam pattern to the 
same set of students. That is difference from the independent sample t-test. The research design could be that you have the two different group of individual and then you test. But here you will see it is the same set of individual or the same students who have been given this exam to perform on the two occasion. That's why I say that independence of observation, which we did for the independent sample t-test and paired uh, this uh, a one way ANOVA, this doesn't exist here. Here it is the same individual, same set of individual. So you have only one study group and either you are measuring the outcome variable at two different point of time before and after or same individual who are under two intervention. Obviously there will be some time period means some uh, if it is a long inter uh, intervention which takes some time then there will be we ask the person to have some washout period and then we give the second intervention but in this case since there is no uh, residual effect like in case of an exam where the uh, effect is very transient then you can give the second intervention and see the difference in score so this is the prerequisite of a paired t test now coming to the underlying assumption, if you see the underlying assumption, there is a one scale variable that is a dependent variable which is measured on a continuous scale. There is a one independent variable that consists of a two categorical group means it could be a two different point time. It could be a matched pair before and after and there should not be any significant outlier and the difference of the score should be normally distributed. This difference of score means that it should be, you can see that we will calculate another variable for this difference of score in the SPSS. Because for normality, we test the normality of difference of score with respect to the mean score. So now what is the null hypothesis in this case? The null hypothesis is the population mean difference of the paired value is equal to zero. And the alternate or research hypothesis is this, that the population mean or difference between the paired value is not equal to zero. Then now the question is, uh, first question is compare the hemoglobin level measured uh, in the gram per deciliter between baseline and the post. So this is the exercise which I have to do. I mean, I have to show you. So there was some intervention. I'll explain the data set to you. This is the data set coming to the variable view. If you see the variable view, it is the, the ID, age, gender, race, socioeconomic status, and anemia. So the, you can see here that there is a value of hemoglobin pre-intervention and there's a value of hemoglobin post-intervention. And this has been categorized into a categorical variable taking some cutoff like we did for the systolic blood pressure. So this is the anemia. So this is a categorical variable, this zero and one where anemia is present or absent. Similarly, this is also a categorical variable post anemia zero, one means present or absent. So this is the, your overall variable and this is the data. So now I said I have to check for the underlying assumption and the question which I have to solve, it is the, I have to check whether the intervention, because of some intervention, what is the effect on hemoglobin level? So hemoglobin pre, and hemoglobin post. So what I said, so one assumption was that there should be one variable which is a continuous in nature. So hemoglobin is a continuous in nature and the independent variable in this case is two different time point. So in two different time point is pre and post. So what will I do? I'll go to the, I have to create another variable and that another variable is
So now uh, I have to create another variable and to create another variable, I have got this option of transform. So go to the transform and compute. So I have to take out the difference. I'll write difference HB. So this is another variable which I am creating. So I'll write this pre, this post minus this is the difference hemoglobin after intervention and hemoglobin before it and then I press this ok and then you will see there is an appearance of another variable so can you see this there is an appearance of another variable here in the can you see this variable this variable was not there initially but now this variable is there. Okay, so you can see this. And now we have to test this difference of variable for the normality. So what I'll do, I'll go to this analyze, descriptive, explore, in the dependent, I'll shift this, I'll go to the plots. Then I'll click this plot, uncheck this, check this, continue, okay. So here you will see that there is an output and you can see, so since the data, the sample size is more than 50. So although the this uh, Shapiro Wilk value also shows that the data is not normal, that the data is normally distributed, but since the sample size is large, we will see that the visual inspection of QQ plot, it shows that the difference of this hemoglobin level is normally distributed because it is across the diagonal line. And if you see the outlier, so if you see the outlier, so can you comment on the outlier? How many outliers are there in this case? Please type in the chat box. So you can see that there are five outliers, serial number 136, 169, 141, 74, and 114. So you have to report, yeah, I'm sorry, I forgot. I forgot to unmute myself. So that's why I'm repeating everything. So uh, that five, uh, this thing five, there are five outliers in this case. So the important will be to report these outlier and then so, uh, you can keep these outliers because independent this uh, paired sample t test is also a robust test and the sample size is large but important is to report but if you wish to remove you, you may also remove all these five values and then carry out the analysis whatever is uh, you choose to decide you should report in your data analysis when you write your statistical analysis now coming to the uh, this this you tested for uh, outlier and normality. Now I'll go to the analyze. This is the paired t test. So for the paired t test, what you do, you go to the compare me.
so yes so we are back so i have to go to the analyze then compare means and here you can see the option of paired sample t test so if you click this you can see there are two variables so there are two pair so you you should move pair 1 here and pair 2 at this place so you can see once you enter this variable here then again the second thing opens up so you can test more than one pair of variable in this case and then in option if you go to the option you don't have to do anything just press okay so if you press okay you will see here that it gives you the overall difference of the mean so it the difference of the mean here is the 0.70 with the standard deviation the lower and the higher confidence interval the value of t degree of freedom and significance so this was significant the change in the hemoglobin that means the intervention which you have planned that was successful in increasing the hemoglobin of the 193 participants this 7.720 this is the difference because you can see the mean hemoglobin level here so if you see this is the difference of the mean hemoglobin level before counseling hemoglobin was i mean uh, was 8.5 this was the pre counseling and after counseling the hemoglobin was 9.2 so there was a difference of 0.702 with the uh, lower and the higher confidence interval and you can see the confidence interval with the same sign that means the confidence this p value is significant this is the value of t which you should report with the 192 degree of freedom and significance now if i you have to report this if you have to interpret this how will you do so let's open the result section interpretation so here is the table of interpretation this is the question i'll hide this increase this and then you see that uh, this is the table so i have written the title it starts with the title of the table comparison and of pre and post intervention and mean hemoglobin level this is the pre intervention this is 8.5 i have taken this value from here this is the post intervention i have taken this value from this 9.2 this is the standard deviation 1.4 and 1.5 this is the statistical t value that is a 5.57 which i have taken from this value with the degree of freedom minus 192 and significance that is the 0.005 now i have to if you have to uh, read it one of you can read this for me yes so who please any volunteer to read the result the difference in mean hemoglobin level was normally estimated as found by visual inspection of the qq plot uh, there were five outliers which were kept in the analysis in our study that uh, there is significant increment in the mean hemoglobin level after intervention yes you can write again the same thing in the bracket here also yeah. that it was significant so this is a uh, you know this is a small thing Uh, results are also since we are only doing on a single set of uh, data i mean the variable if there are many then you can have that in the same table depending on your if you can club those nature of variable together or not so this is the paired t test so uh, just to summarize once again the paired t test if you see it it can be done the paired t test can be done on the same set of individual the most important thing which should be kept in mind that there is only single set of study subjects you don't have different groups no grouping in this pair t test so same individual either tested twice at two different time point or tested for two different conditions both these will produce the same two values that will be the paired value right arm left arm like you see uh, you have seen in the medicated uh, 
lotion example. So there also you will perform a pair T test. Underlying assumptions are same. The only difference here is that you calculate a new variable. New variable is the difference of very, I mean the two pre and post value and you test the normality of that difference. And then you go, if, if, if I, I show you the commands one again, once again, then you go to, to this, you come to this transform, <coughs> compute, here you type the name of the variable. I have typed it like the difference in hemoglobin. Here I have written hemoglobin post minus hemoglobin pre, and then press okay. We have used this compute variable for calculation of mean SBP also in your exercise. And I have shown it with the BMI, remember? Can you recall the day one session? where we have used this transform compute option. Then if you press okay, then there is an appearance of a new variable, which you can see here. This one difference in hemoglobin. Then you have to test this difference for the uh, normality. So you go to the explore, click this plot, uncheck this stem and leaf, check this normality with plot, continue, press okay, then you will have that output. And then again, after analyzing that, you go to the analyze, compare means, there will be paired sample t-test. Here, there will be variable one and variable two. You can do whatever way you want. It will take just the one minus two. So by seeing the sign of the difference, you can see that whether it was an increase or decrease, and then press OK. And then you will be presented with this table where you can see that you will have a descriptive mean SD of the pre and post. You will have a paired sample, t the value of t-test, its degree of freedom and significance level. So I think, uh, uh, is it clear to everyone or any uh, ambiguity? Then we may take the questions, one or two questions. Ma'am, when uh, we were entering in SPSS, uh, for the pair data, uh, like variable one, variable two. So in variable one, we mentioned post, uh, post, uh, uh, what do you say? Post intervention, yes, post hemoglobin and variable yes. two pre hemoglobin. If we do vice versa, I don't think it would be a problem, right, ma'am? See, I'll do, I'll do it for you, for you. I have reset this. Now I'll do this pre first and then post. Right, this this you are saying, it's like a put a researcher, ma'am. Right, ma'am, like to keep uh, what and, to keep uh, yes, in variable yes. one. You can change this also, no? If by this you can change this. So you can change this post and pre again. You can change this pre and post, right? So if you do this, only the sign will change. Like I, I'll perform this once again for you. So if you see this, it is minus 7.02. So sign is minus. This is again the same concept which you did in ANOVA. Remember, you yes, did I minus J or J yes, minus. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. That sign tells you. It is just to show you that whether the intervention like CRP, ferritin. If you are doing some intervention, you will expect that value to go down. In that case, the 1 minus 2 will be positive. But if like a case of hemoglobin, when you expect the outcome variable to increase after your intervention, then definitely your one minus two will be negative. Did you get that? Yes, ma'am. Is it clear to all other people? Yes, ma'am. So ma'am, we can say that it's up to us that whether we, what we want to yes, keep yes, in yes. variable one and variable two. Yes, it's entirely. Our choice. Bilkul, bilkul. It's your choice. Depending on your outcome, whether you expect it to decrease or increase. Okay, or even if, even if whatever you do, you can just change the sign here, like we did for the ANOVA. Yes, ma'am. Like T here, you can see it is in negative. So you will just reverse the sign. It will be positive. So if it is clear to everyone, then we'll go to the breakout room.